Now we're going to demonstrate the soloing aspects of Band in a Box, which can be accessed from the solo button. First of all, let's load in a song. I'm loading in the song called 71 Benny, which is found in this uh, location of your uh, Band in a Box directory. If you want to load it in by the open button, it might be uh, just as easy. This particular song has a melody on it, so let's get rid of the melody so we don't have that interfering with us. So we'll erase the melody here. So now we have a song with no melody and it's ready to um, solo uh, right away. Um, first let's examine where, what the soloist is all about. There's an additional instrument added to Band in a Box, an additional part called the soloist part. It gets its own channel which must be different than the other channels assigned. It can have its own patch, volume, reverb and other information. It's accessed by the top here where you can set any settings for it. Basically it's like another channel just like the melody channel. S like the melody channel here you, we have all the same sort of editing options. So even if you aren't using it as a soloist you can think of it as the second melody track that can record melodies which will be saved as sort of counter melodies which can be saved with the song and that sort of thing. So all of the same editing options apply. So here's this uh, song uh, which will now play without any melody attached to it. These little fills are part of the style uh, which is the jazz quintet style but they're not really solos. So now we can see what sort of job Band in a Box will do with soloing over this. Now when you press the easiest way to get the soloing going it could be accessed from the solo menu here, generate and play a solo, and that's the same as this button here. Shift F4 will do the same. So let's let's do this one with Shift F4 instead of pressing the solo button. Okay, by pressing Shift F4, this is ready to go in a soloist prepared called B. Goodman Quintet. Usually if there's a name of, of uh, a band type of name, it means that the soloist itself is going to change instruments with each chorus, which is this particular option here. We're going to show you how to create your own soloist and how you can assign these settings. But you can see that other uh, styles don't have this, uh, other soloists don't have this style uh, option set. This one does because it's a, it's a band. So the point is pressing the solo button, this one was all ready to go and because of the auto suggest feature, Band in a Box will always suggest an appropriate soloist for you to uh, use. So let's just uh, see what sort of solo it generates over this song. Obviously you're hearing a clarinet and uh, the, what you're seeing in pink is exactly the solo being generated by Band in a Box. Let's get the soloist part happening in notation. You can see the uh, red highlight notes highlight the, mel uh, the solo that's playing. Now that we've started a new chorus, we've changed to a new instrument, which is uh, vibes. And with each chorus, it'll change to a different one. Uh, we'll start out with uh, clarinet, vibes, and uh, I think the next one might be piano. The soloist has all the options uh, that you'd expect from a professional type of soloist, in that it uh, puts space in between the phrases. That piano is a little bit quiet. If we wanted to increase it, of course, we would just go like that. Okay, so that sounds uh, uh, so that sounds pretty good. Let's um, see about how that soloist was in fact created. 
So let's uh, realize that the soloist part is very analogous to the harmony part in terms of uh, creating your own soloist. And uh, the way you would do it is go to a soloist that's un unused, which the first one seems to be 167. We could use 170 if we want. Um, and to create our own soloist, we'll realize that we need to press this edit button. Now we're going to create a soloist and we'll call it demo soloist. And then you can type in a memo here, which will, which will uh, put here. Now, uh, we're going to recreate this, um, this soloist uh, that we used for, for Benny, which is soloist number 71. And we'll show you how we'll do it. So the first thing we want to decide is what type of soloist we're, it's going to be. Uh, this setting here will determine in, in what list on this dialog box, you probably can't see much of it, but uh, here this setting will uh, tell it what type of soloist it is. So this soloist we're creating uh, for Benny is a swing eighths type of soloist. We're, we want to use this database. Uh, you could uh, select the database. They're all in the BB directory. So you would select it right in there. The default happens to be J swing. But <clears throat> it's important for you to tell it that the um, that this is a swing eighth notes type of database. Band in a box will set this one for you automatically. Obviously, we don't want a flute here, so we're going to set this to the main instrument, which is clarinet. We could just set it like this, but a much better way is to use the Choose button. The Choose will allow us to select the instrument, which we want as clarinet, but also selects the correct instrument range, which uh, for the clarinet is 54 to 86. This is the range of the instrument that would be typically useful in soloing. Harmony would be if we wanted a specific harmony to be assigned to the soloist. For example, if we were creating a super sax soloist. In this case, we don't. Change instrument with each chorus is something that will <coughs> do what it says, which is each chorus, it will change the instrument playing. So do we want clarinet for the whole song, or do we want clarinet for the first chorus and then a different instrument for each chorus? I think we would like a different instrument in this situation. So we're going to say clarinet will be for the first chorus, but for the second one, perhaps we'd like, well, we'll say that because Benny G is the leader of the group, why not give him um, uh, two choruses? So he'll have the first one, and he can have the second one as well. So we can set that one to, uh, to clarinet. Then we'll say, then we'll like our vibes to come in. And you notice the instrument ranges are being set, and they're different for clarinet and vibes. And then we'll have a, then we'll have a piano player come in for the, for the fourth chorus. So we're going to get clarinet for two choruses, and then we're going to get vibes, and then we're going to get uh, piano. You could change these uh, settings if you want the piano to be, player to be playing a little bit higher than uh, than normal. So now we've got our instruments set up. Now. Do we want, with our soloist, do we want him to come in and bring his own style with him? And the answer in this one is yes. Let's, let's have him uh, bring in a jazz quintet style, which is one of the styles in Band in a Box. So we'll load that style in. And you would want to tell it, Ben in a box, that this style is also swing eighths. Now these settings really control things like phrasing and outside range and that sort of thing. Phrase length is, is in beats. We'll have to say, how long of phrases do we want this soloist to use? For example, somebody like Miles Davis plays in short phrases, whereas somebody like uh, Pat Martino or somebody else uh, would play in much longer phrases. So you can experiment with these settings. But let me select uh, phrase lengths of 2 to 24 for, for the Benny G um, soloist. Then, once the phrase is finished, do we want another phrase to start immediately? And if so, how much space should be left between the phrases? So I'm just picking these numbers um, uh, because I'm recreating the soloist that we've already created. But we'll say that 
you know, roughly two thirds of the time between the phrases, let's leave some space and let's leave between zero and four beats. Fan in a box is always going to randomize all these settings between these for you. And uh, now the outside range, uh, Fan in a box will analyze everything it could be possibly playing and and something that is considered outside would have the highest value would be at nine. For example, if you're on a C major seventh chord and you're playing unusual notes like uh, you know G f G sharp or C sharp, these would be considered outside notes unless they were used very briefly as passing tones or this sort of thing. If they're used as main tones in a in a phrase, band in a box would consider that an outside phrase. So we're, if you were doing, a, say, a modern jazz style, leave this at 1 to 9, but because we're doing Benny G, uh, in those days they like to use um, pretty inside phrases. Now, the legato boost is compared to a piano, uh, do we want the notes to be paid more legato than usual? Because this is primarily for clarinet, uh, we would like a legato boost on this, which will boost the length of all the notes to be a more legato uh, 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 phrasing. If you didn't do this, you'd notice that it w things would be a little more um, uh, uh, staccato sounding. Now the lateness setting, we're dealing in 120 ppq and lateness affects how late the music is played compared to a typical, in this case, a typical jazz player. Now we're deciding that uh, for, for the Benny G, um, uh, clarinet soloist, I think he would play a little more on top of the beat than most jazz people, so we'll assign a number like minus three to this, which means that it will be played three uh, of the 120 ppq, three ticks effectively, earlier and more on top of the beat. The eighth note spacing should be fine in this case. That would mean should he play his eighth notes closer together. Remembering that band in a box is if you leave these at zero, band in a box is going to, uh, you know, put in default settings and this sort of thing uh, for you. So if you now notice and you switch to our demo soloist, we've created the whole thing. The memo's there, the instrument's assigned to clarinet, we're changing instrument with each chorus, and if we went back and visited these, all of our settings are there. So we've created this new soloist that has the... Um, the setting uh, for uh, all the same settings for the jazz quintet. So we expect a similar result to what we had in, in uh, soloist number 71, but let's give it a try. You can see the solo here. And of course, as the solo is, is playing, you can mess around with these things, you know, if you want to change it to a different instrument or something. The harmonies for the soloist are all uh, contained on the through harmony. We didn't want to use an additional three uh, channels for the soloist harmonies, because there really aren't that many MIDI channels left in there anymore. So, uh, you know, you can have this change to, uh, you know, uh, George Shearing uh, or Harmony or Super Sax. Probably, uh, and as you recall, in our soloist, we told it to play two choruses, which it's doing, on the clarinet, and then we told it to switch the vibe. It'll do a pretty smooth transition between uh, uh, the choruses, following the rules of you know jazz solo, which is uh, to, to never the other guy will never uh, take over uh, too early. Or anything. You can view this in notation as it's playing. Now, from an educational standpoint, let's have a look at what you can do. Number one, you can reduce the tempo or by, by hitting the left bracket key. Now, well, let's say you wanted to learn that. Press the loop screen button. So 
now at this point you can get out your horn or your piano and just sight read along with the music here. practicing along with it. Let's, uh, let's stop it and just have a look at what the soloist was generating uh, because you can also use it for musical analysis of solos. Here we're on a C ninth chord and you can look that it was playing a little bit vertically there playing a C sixth arpeggio followed by some linear playing. It does pretty much a C uh, seventh scale and then another arpeggio, and then we're on to the G minor 7th chord, and it does a nice 2 5 1 riff there involving a, a 2 5 riff involving the uh, linear playing again. Now you might say, that's great, but I play uh, alto saxophone, and I'd like to see this in a uh, correct key. So you can use the transpose feature here to display the notation in a different key. Now, uh, alto sax, E flat instrument, so they want to be three semitones out. So they could, we could display this as uh, minus three, or we could display it. Uh, uh, so let's try that. We'll put it at minus three. That makes it into the correct uh, key, which is D instead of F, but it does it an octave too low so we we need to bring it 12 semitones up from the minus 3 so a setting of uh, 9 should do it and then we still hear the music in concert key which is desirable but the music's displayed correctly including the correct and harmonics for the uh, uh, E flat uh, player similarly the um, similarly the uh, B flat players can uh, set it for their key and then when you've mastered this uh, particular riff, press the arrow down key, cursor down, and you can get to a new riff and uh, learn that one and etc. etc. all the way. Because this is of course uh, clarinet and we've brought it up an octave, it's out of the range of, uh, of uh, alto, but of course this is just for demonstration purposes, we would have chosen a real alto uh, soloist here. So let's set the transpose back to zero. So the concert people uh, can be uh, reading along as well. So uh, this is uh, intended, um, this whole soloist thing is pretty much intended to help people um, solo and learn to solo themselves by seeing what sort of uh, lines would be played over various um, chord changes. The computer is not intended to be replacing uh, any kind of um, you know, human soloing. It's just uh, more or less an educational uh, sort of thing.